apples and pumpkins at the farm stand, schools back in session, signs that summer is ending and fall is beginning. But there's another annual adventure that takes place this time of year that you may have not noticed. The monarch migration is underway. It's an annual event and no butterfly in the world migrates like the monarchs of North America. They can travel up to 3,000 miles. Monarchs fly from Canada to Mexico across the United States and Pennsylvania plays a role in the migration in what's known as the Eastern Flyway and peak season for this is happening now. That usually takes place starting now uh, into the first couple weeks of September and uh, peak migration in this area is usually the second week in September. That can vary from year to year. It depends if you're in the mountains, it depends on, on uh, your weather, the weather from uh, your growing zone because they're so dependent on floral resources when they're migrating that uh, there might still be plants blooming in the southern, southern part of Pennsylvania. They're heading south and as they prepare for their journey, they're, they're looking for food. That nourishment includes many native plants that are currently in bloom. It's nectar that fuels their journey. So what, when you see, like if you look out in the meadow here, there are uh, goldenrod blooming and New England aster. And when you see those plants blooming, you know monarch migration is underway. You know, several people, they think of goldenrod as they're allergic to it, but uh, really that's ragweed. It's not goldenrod, uh, but they de monarchs depend on goldenrod for their journey, as, as, as along with uh, other uh, resources, nectar resources. But the fuel provided by these native plants is in danger of dying out thanks to humans. Everything from high-speed traffic to pesticide spraying to loss of habitat. For example, that meadow that their ancestors stopped in last year could be a parking lot now, so that's a problem. In addition to habitat loss, our changing climate is also posing a threat to migrating monarchs. The increasing intensity of weather events is also a factor, and things like early spring warm-ups and late spring freezes can harm the butterflies but also impact their food supply. The butterflies on the western flyway can be harmed, weakened, or killed by the smoke and ash from the wildfires, and of course there's a lot of habitat loss happening there. And more recently, we, there is concern that because cooler temperatures are a cue for migration, the fact that the temperatures in their winter roost in Mexico are warming could cause the mi monarchs to stop migrating altogether. Because of these changes, a program started at the University of Kansas called Monarch Watch was created. The idea is to use information created from citizen scientists to get a better understanding of where monarchs are traveling during the year. There's so much we don't know about monarchs. Uh, there's so many un unanswered questions. For example, uh, how does weather affect their, their migration? Does the migration change from year to year? Uh, are there specific pathways they take? How do they move across the continent? These are all questions that can be answered. In order to get these answers, volunteers tag monarchs during the peak migration season which is occurring now in Pennsylvania. That's right, a small sticker is placed onto Monarchs. The tag contains a code. The volunteers then record that code, as well as who did the tagging, where and when it was tagged, and the gender of the Monarch. This information is then sent to a central system at Monarch Watch. If the butterfly reaches its destination in the fir forests of Mexico, scientists can trace their arrival by looking at the tag. Each tag, it's, it's only about a quarter inch big and it has a special adhesive that was developed so it doesn't hurt the butterfly, it doesn't impede their flight. And each tag has the web address so that if that uh, butterfly is, is recovered in Mexico, uh, they can then uh, put that in their database. Monarch Watch is currently looking for volunteer taggers. Just go to their website to learn how you can participate. And if you aren't interested in tagging, there's still a way you can help this creature continue on its journey for years to come. The most important thing we can do is to provide habitat. It could be as simple as something like uh, adding native milkweed to your existing garden at your home or school or business. Um, milkweed is the host plant for the monarch. 
It's where monarchs lay their eggs, and it's the only food that the monarch caterpillar can or will eat. So it's a very important resource, and the blooms provide important nectar throughout the migrating season. Other plants such as native asters and goldenrod are also excellent late fall resources to help the monarchs as they journey south. One reminder if you have the natives in your own garden, you need to resist the urge to trim them back before the winter or even in early spring. The plant stems and the fallen leaves are all left as they are and they provide important shelter for other butterflies, other pollinators and birds who spend the winter here. Once spring arrives, you can begin your cleanup. We usually suggest tax day is just an easy day to remember. We all remember April 15th, so that's kind of our rule of thumb here. Uh, is just wait till after then because by then most pollinators will have emerged and it's safe to do so. Whether you are planting or tagging this fall, know that you are playing a pivotal role in a 3,000 mile expedition across North America. For Weather World, I'm Marissa Ferger.